forward ever, backwards never. That brings us to our next video of price action. Last week, we talked about some reversal patterns. This week, we're going to talk about continuation patterns. Now, continuation patterns simply means that the trend is either bearish or bullish. And so once you see those patterns, if the trend is bullish, it means the bullish trend is going to continue. And if the trend is bearish, when you see those patterns, it means that the bearish trend is going to continue. So that is what we're going to look at in this video. So take your time and watch this video to the end. Today's patterns, some of them look similar to that of the reversal patterns. So I'm going to take my time to explain them so that you don't get confused when you see the reversal ones, all right? so that they will not confuse you with the continuation ones, all right? So let's, let's take our time and go step by step. We still have some few videos about this whole price action. We've been doing this for the past three weeks, and you know that. We've talked about the nature of the market. We've talked about the structure, and we've started with the, the patterns, and we talked about the, the, the reversal patterns. Today's video is on continuation. After the continuation patterns, we'll be looking at the neutral patterns. Patterns that when you see them, it means that the market is going nowhere. At that moment, the market is just taking the time to relax. Those patterns will also come. But let's look at the continuation patterns, okay? My name is Kofi, your admin for this channel. In case this is your first time of watching us, we have two main playlists. The tutorial playlist, which is uh, Forest Training for Beginners. When you go to the description of this video, you will find a link to the playlist. You can watch the whole playlist, and I'm sure you will find interesting stuff inside that playlist. We also have the signal playlist. And that one, every Sunday, we bring you forecasts or signals that you can trade when the market opens in the course of the week. So these are the two main things we do for now on this channel. We want to help welcome you and ask you to join us as we do this thing called Forex together. Is that okay? So quickly, without wasting my time, let's go straight to the chat and look at the continuation patterns. Don't forget, we've talked about some of these patterns already, and you can see them, a lot of them are here. So we are continuing with the continuation patterns. Today, the very first one that I would like to talk about is known as the bullish rectangle. Bullish rectangle. So uh, it is termed bullish rectangle uh, in a sense that when you see a pattern of this nature, it tells you that uh, the trend is a bullish one. And for that matter, it's going to continue very soon. So we have something like this. OK, and then it comes back, goes to that same equal level and then comes back to the downside on the same equal level. So creating something like what? Uh, a triangle. Is that OK? Forming something like a triangle. Do you see that? So that is what you see here. So it gives you one, two, three, four. Sometimes it may even give you more than four. It can even come up again inside the same triangle and come back again down. So you may see several of this within this triangle. And then once the, the market finally breaks out of this triangle to the upside, okay? Once it breaks out of this triangle to the upside, then you will have to patiently wait for it to come back and test this triangle. So at that point, this place becomes uh, a support area, okay? If you, you, you learn about sup uh, supply and demand or support or resistance, these names are the same. When you hear supply and demand or demand and supply, it simply means the same as, uh, 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 what do you call it? Resistance and support. And it also means the same as higher high and lower low. You understand? So once the market breaks out of this triangle or rectangle that we are looking at, this is a rectangle. So once it breaks out of it, it must come back and retest, which is now going to be, this was a resistant level, but now going to look like a support level or going to be a support level. So the one and three must be retested. And once it retests, you must see some patterns printed. 
and that will give you an indication that this trend is going to reverse and go back up. All right. Now, sometimes, sometimes the break will happen. Okay. And this uh, triangle, sorry, rectangle may never be retested. It may just continue its way to the top or to the upside continuously without retesting the rectangle. That is also possible. But it is always good that you wait and see if that retest will happen. If it happens, it becomes a better way to trade. Because once you enter your trade on the retest, your uh, stop loss becomes the second and fourth point here, which is the, the down here. The down level here becomes your stop loss. And then your take profit can be two or three times of this range or this triangle between the top to the down. You measure three of that to become your take profit. So uh, once you get to know your stop loss, you can go two or three times your stop loss as your take profit. Is that okay? So uh, let me say this again before I even continue. Sometimes the break may happen and then the retest may not be exactly on this on this uh, one and three, which is now the support. Sometimes it may break through the support and come deep into the rectangle, making you believe that this support didn't hold. And for all you know, you see the reversal taking place and then the trade will move back up. So these are all situations that you may see in the market. The reason you are seeing all these changes is because the market is constantly changing. The reason is because we have people like you and I behind the PC somewhere in a bank. You know the banks, the market makers, the banks who control the price. There are also human beings like us, and they know what we know. And they even know more than what we know. So sometimes they will play on your emotions, making you think that, oh, this thing is no more going to be. And before you realize, they come back and then they are going where you thought they will go. So often I will always tell people that, look, if you want to be doing this thing, you need to have patience. If you don't have patience, for instance, like I'm saying, once they break this here and then they come back to retail, they get to this level and then you take your buy and then you put your stop loss here on the four or two, which is this point here. Fine. At that moment, if they do not reverse immediately on the one and three back up, and then they continue their way back into the rectangle, you need to patiently wait. The reason is because you have your stop loss at the two and four. So you have nothing to worry. Yours is to either win or lose. That is the game of Forex. When you place a trade, it's either you win that trade or you lose. So that is why you always need to, first of all, practice your strategy to be sure what your strategy is like before you begin to put your real money or your life account on it. So once you believe in what you are doing and you know that, okay, this is what you have tested over a certain period of time and you believe in that and you put your stop loss, allow that stop loss to be. If the stop loss is hit, that is fine because you entered your trade here on the one and three and the trade is still coming deep into the rectangle. Wait patiently, and then if the reversal happens back to the top, bravo, you win. But if it refuses to go back up and continues its way down to hit your stop loss, that is fair. That is okay because it means your setup has failed. It hasn't taken anything away, although you have lost, but your setup has failed. But if you do it and you wait patiently and it reverses back into your favor, your setup has won. It's, it's not like you, you want to be in haste or you want to ask the market to do what it's supposed to do. No, you cannot control the market. The people who are controlling the market are just human beings like us. And so they play on our emotions because they know when you make your losses, they are making the wins. So when they are playing on your emotion, you have to wait patiently and allow the market to do what it has to do. So once we take a trade back, there are people, once they see the break, they will immediately take the buy on the break. Fine, but that is too risky. 
maybe this break that is has happened is a false one. Okay, maybe it's a false one. And for all you know, like I said, sometimes it may not even come back to retest. It may continue its way up, 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 up. So for me, the best way I will advise you to do is to wait, get a retest. Then you can take your buy. But if you also want to take it on the break, that is fair enough because the market is full of either wins or losses. So if you want to take your trade on the break, fine. But I will suggest that you wait patiently for a retest of the one and three area. Then once you begin to see the prints indicating that it's about to make an up move. And whenever I say a print, I'm talking about the price action that you will see. Sometimes you will see some candles, okay? You may see some engulfing candles, the patterns. You may be seeing some of the patterns. You may be seeing some doji candles or the hammer, the inverted uh, hammer, the morning star, the evening star. You may be seeing them. And if you are, uh, 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 what do you call it? I, I want to. I want the right word. If 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 you are candlesticks person, and you understand the candlesticks and the, the way they interpret or what they mean, once you begin to see them, it will give you an idea that okay, uh, the reversal that you are expecting is actually about to take place. The market will always signal a reversal if it is about to happen. So yours is to watch out for it. Sometimes if you are not a, a candlesticks person and you are this kind of pattern person, you wait to see any of the patterns. Sometimes you may see a double bottom and the double bottom will give you an indication that, okay, all right. So maybe you may see something like this. I'm taking my time on this video because uh, I want you to understand this once and for all. So the break will come back and retest and then you may see a double bottom like this. So giving you the double bottom here, is a clear indication that this trade is going back to the top. So sometimes you will see the print. This is what I mean by the print. Once you see that, it's an indication. It gives you the edge to confidently enter your trade. Okay, so those are the prints I'm expecting you to watch and look out for. It may not be double bottom. It may be triple bottom, okay? Or it may be a wedge that you will see over there, which is indicating that the reversal is about to take place. But if you are a candlesticks person, sometimes you may be seeing the candles, uh, which will be formed. And those candles will give you a clear interpretation that the reversal is about to take place. That is something you must always look out for on all the patterns. In terms of when to take your trade, when to enter your uh, trade, you must always take into consideration the, 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 the price that will be printed either candles or maybe the patterns that you will see will give you a clear indication that the reversal is about to take place or the continuation of the trend is about to happen. So this is a continuation back to the top. So once you see it is already an uptrend, the market consolidates a bit in a rectangle, breaks out of that rectangle, a possible retest, and then it continues its way back to the top or into a bullish direction. Okay, the opposite is also true, but uh, let me go quickly because I don't want this video to take as much time because the patterns are many. So this is what I'm talking about. Once you see this, then you know that it is time to enter your trade. So your entry will be at this arrow. The green arrow here will be on the retest. That is where your trade will be taken. Your stop loss will be on the two and four. That is where your stop loss will be. And two or three times your stop loss must be your take profit. Is that okay? So that is that. So that is uh, the breakout to the top, a continuation of the trend to the bullish side. Now let's look at the bearish side. Now, this is a bearish uh, trend and then you see this. So like I said on the first one, once you see uh, a break back to the down and then a retest, then you can now expect the prints you see here in terms of price action, then it gives you an idea to enter your cell. So it's just like that of the, the bullish side. So the bearish rectangle, you always have to watch out for it. You may see it often. People who trade gold often see it a lot and not only gold. You know, the market is always trending either to the upside or to the downside. So you will see some of these patterns a lot. And this is one of the patterns that you must be watching out for, the rectangle uh, pattern, which signifies a continuation, all right? So if the bearish is going to continue, this is what you will see. 
and then you can take your trade, all right? Now let's move away from this. So we are done with this rectangle uh, continuation pattern. Let's look at the next one, which is the bullish flag. This one, it looks like a flag if you look at it. So what is happening here is that the market is trending to the upside and then you see a kind of something like this. Uh, you see something like this, like some flag. And the market will be trading, trending in the flag, okay? Until it breaks out of the flag, you understand? So you, this is to the upside. So once the market breaks out of the flag to the upside, then you this becomes your points to take note of. These two points here. When the market breaks out of it, you wait for a retest, then you can take your buy to the upside. So this is the bullish flag and you will often see it uh, in, in the trend as the, the market makes an uptrend or uh, goes up. So this is the bullish flag. So if you want to take a trade on the bullish flag, then this is how it must be. And like I said earlier in the other pattern, sometimes it may not just do double top here and double down, it may continue. You may see a lot of prints within the, the flag before it finally breaks out of the flag. So like I said, the market is always changing. Although the pattern is the same, but if it gave you the previous one, two, two, uh, two tops like this, it doesn't mean that the next move will be the same. Sometimes it may give you three. So you may see three, three before the break will happen. Sometimes you may see four. Sometimes you may even see just one or two. So it's, it's always changing, but the flag is the flag. The pattern is still the pattern. So you must watch out for that, all right? So this is the bullish, uh, to the bullish side. Once you see the bullish flag, it means that once there's a breakout of the flag, the market is making its way to the upside. We also have the bearish side, which is also like this. So the market gives a flag like this, which is more or less with uh, its head to the downwards. And then once there is a breakout of it, uh, there's a breakout of it, it comes back and retest, then you can take your sell. So the same thing, this is also the bearish uh, flag, which you may see. So when you see something like this, then you know that there's a continuation about to take place, all right? Now let's move to the next set of uh, continuation patterns. The next one I want to talk about is what we call the, the pennant. The pennant is, is just like the flag, but this one is very, very small, very, very small. And what is happening here is that they are, they are giving you some kind of V shape, all right? Some kind of V shape like this. So the next high is not higher than the previous high. And then the previous low is here. The next low is also not uh, lower than the previous low. Do you see it? This is the flag. But the print is very small. It's very small. It's not big. So this was the previous high or resistance. The next resistance or high that comes becomes a lower one. It is not above the previous one. And then when it comes to the, 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 the support also the same. The first support here is lower than the next support that you will see. So once you see this, then it means you are seeing a bullish pennant. Once there's a breakout of it and a retest, you can take your trade. Uh, the decision is yours to take because this is a continuation pattern. Once you see it, it is a clear indication that this is what I would suggest you look out for in terms of taking the trade. The same way when you take your trade on some of this, for instance, you are asking what will be your stop loss. Your stop loss will always be the end of the, the second, which is the first uh, lower low or the first support here. Not on this one, this one. It should be on this one. Your uh, stop loss should be here. And three times or two times the stop loss should be your take profit. Do you understand? Good. So this is what you will see when it comes to the, the bullish pennant. Now let's look at the bearish pennant. It's just like this. It's also like this. So the lower low that you see here, the next one is not lower than that one. This one pulls back in. And then the higher high that was also formed, the next one that comes is not as high as that one. Then you can get your pennant. And once you, there's a breakout of this, and a possible retest, then you continue. 
So that is the uh, bearish pennant. So you will always see it in terms of continuation of patterns. So when you get something like this, your entry will be, and your stop loss will be at the top here, at the top of the, the higher, the first higher high, all right? So two or three times that will become your take profit. Let's look at that. So let's move away from the, the bearish and the bullish pennant. And then we move on to the next one, which is bullish uh, symmetrical triangle. This uh, uh, triangle looks similar to that of the pennant. So I am going to explain. The only difference here is that this one is a bit bigger in terms of size. The very first thing to differentiate the two is the size. But sometimes there are people who still say the size is nothing to consider since they are all doing the same thing. The size is nothing to consider because if the pennant size is very small, but this one is huge. It's still going to do the same thing as the pennant will do. So we should call it as a pennant also. So like I said earlier, the higher high, the next one that comes is not as higher than the previous one. The lower low to same. But this one, like I said, the print is big. You see the print big. You see the pattern bigger. And then the pennant ones, uh, ones are very small. That is the only difference. That is the only difference. But their style of trading is still the same. So when you see them, uh, this is it. So the bullish symmetrical triangle, this is how it is. Just like the pennant, just like the pennant. So I won't waste my time on it. This is the bearish one. So just that the size is a bit huge as compared to the uh, pennant. So the same thing. So that is also that. We move away from that to the next one, which is an ascending triangle. Now look at this very well. Would you not think that this is a, a wedge, a rising wedge? If you watched the part 66 video, which has to do with the reversal patterns, would you not say this is a rising wedge? Because the rising wedge and then the ascending triangle, they are almost the same, but there's difference. So let me give you the difference here. Look at this very carefully. Take critical note of what I'm going to tell you. Now, when it comes to the ascending triangle, which is a continuation pattern, the higher highs are on the same level. The higher highs are the same. But when it comes to a wedge, the higher highs are not the same. So with the wedge, the first higher high will be like this. The next one may go higher a bit than this. The next one may go a bit higher than this. Then like that, in that order. So you see? Look at the difference. So you see this one. So this is a wedge. This is a wedge. This is an ascending triangle. But the triangle, the higher highs are the same, on the same level. On the same level. Get the difference. That is the only difference. The higher highs are on the same level in terms of the ascending triangle. But when it comes to um, the wedge, the higher highs will keep changing. Just that the highs are not too high, but just similar, very a bit up, a bit up above. But, but this one, it's on the same level. The higher highs are on the same level. So when you see this being on the same level, never think that this is a wedge. This is a triangle. It's an ascending triangle. And this is a continuation pattern. So they may look very confusing, but when you take your time, you will see it. So that one to a break out of that uh, higher high level here, which is on equal height, a break and a retest of it, then you take your entry. That is the continuation pattern called the ascending triangle. We also have the descending triangle, which is for the bearish. And that one to the same thing. The lower lows are on each same level. That is the only difference between this one and then the falling wedge. The falling wedge, the, the lower lows are not on equal level. They are not. But the descending triangle, the lower lows are on equal level. So a break out of that equal level here and the retest of it gives you your entry. So that is the difference between the rising and falling wedge and then the ascending triangle and then the descending triangle. So quickly, let's continue with the next set of uh, 
con bullish continuation or bearish continuation patterns. This is, I think, the uh, last one. And this one is what we call the cap handle. Cap and handle in a sense that if you look at this, it's more or less like a curve. The patterns that are printed, it, a bullish trend, then the patterns are printed, something like this. And then you see something like this again with another cap. So it's like some U shape and then another cap. So you see something like a cap and then handle. Now we are saying a cap and handle because when it's on equal level here. So this one looks more or less like a cap and this is the small part here is the handle of the cap. Do you understand? That is why it is called cap and handle. So if I go to the next slide, you see it clearly. So this is how it looks like. So the bigger part here is the cap, and then the small here, hand here is the handle. So this is the cap and handle. Once you see this, you are expecting a breakout of it. Often the cap and handle is on equal level. The higher highs are on equal level. So if it, sometimes if it is not on equal level, you are looking at a breakout of it. Once there's a breakout of that level, then you are waiting for a retest and then a continuation like this something like this. So when it comes to the cup and handle, you are expecting to see something like this, and this should be your format of entry. So if you should enter a trade here, what should be your stop loss? Your stop loss must be on the small handle. The end of the handle should be your stop loss. And two or three times of that should be your uh, take profit. Is that okay? So that is the cup and handle to the upside. Now we have the berry side, the cup and handle to the berry side. This is how it is the cap and handle to the very side. So this becomes the cap, this is the handle, the small part is the handle. So if you look at this, you see it clearly. So once there's a breakout of this and a retest, you can take your trade like this. So this is also the cap and handle in terms of the uh, bearish side. So all these patterns we've talked about are all continuation patterns. When you spot them, they are continuation patterns. Is there any one more? No. So this is all the patterns in terms of continuation of the trend. So I would suggest that you take your time and learn them, chew them, mold them in your head so that you go to the chat and begin to experiment. Uh, there's no much time. So I may not be able to go to the MT4 chat or the trading view chat to show you some of them, but there are lots of them on the chat. If you take your time and you switch in between the time frames, you will surely see them. And once you see them, you look at how they operate or they work, and that will give you an idea of how to spot them the next time you see any of them. Is that okay? So this is going to be the end of this video. If you love what you have seen, please subscribe to this channel because we have more videos coming. This is still on price action. We are looking at trading the charts without indicators. A lot of people are asking for that, so I needed to do this. So these are patterns you need to look out for. We've talked about the reversal patterns, which is the part 66. Today, this video is talking about the continuation pattern. We'll be looking at the neutral patterns in our next video. Take time and take your time and study them well and practice them. If it, it will take you even a year to get them well and master them, do it if only you want to take this as a serious job to do for your, the rest of your life or to do as part of your life, you need to take your time and lend them and keep them in your head. Is that okay? So that is that. And that is the end of this video. My name is Kofi, your admin. I will see you tomorrow Sunday with the market review. The forecast and signals will come tomorrow Sunday. So expect those videos tomorrow.